If it were possible for a Nigerian president to build high quality roads all over the country, that would be impressive. Prices of foodstuff will go down, life expectancy of vehicles will increase, travel time will be cut by more than half, and even tourism will receive a major boost. But all these cannot be compared to a fraction of the benefits that will accrue if Nigerians attain sufficiency in power. The reason is that the key to development is industrialization. And industrialization is virtually impossible without sufficient power. No wonder developed nations are also referred to as industrialized nations. In fact, one of the major reasons for classifying a nation as third world, underdeveloped, or developing, is its inability to generate sufficient electric power for its industries and local population. Unfortunately, this is our current reality. Hello viewers, I'm Shola Jay, and you are welcome to the summit. On this episode, we'll be considering the issue of power generation in Nigeria and look at the reasons why. After spending hundreds of billions, some will even say trillions, we yet to deal with our power situation. I will be discussing this very critical topic with three people, all seasoned in their respective professions. But just before we meet them, enjoy this short documentary. At the start of the Fourth Republic, the Obasanjo administration mooted the Vision 2020 idea based on the forecast of foreign experts that Nigeria had the potential to become an economic powerhouse by the year 2020. But pivotal to achieving this dream was a wholesale transformation of the alien power sector which was by this time arguably in its lowest point in history. An estimated 90 million people were without access to grid electricity in a total population of about 120 million. And Nigeria's installed power capacity stood at a depressing 3,000 megawatts, even though it had been determined that the country will require over 100,000 megawatts of electricity to meet its local need. To begin to address this yearning gap, the Obasanjo administration embarked on an aggressive power reform, approving a national electric power policy in 2001, followed by the Electric Power Sector Reform Act in 2005. The EPSR Act, which would not only break the monopoly enjoyed by the National Electric Power Authority, NEPA, by promoting effective competition through privatization, would also promote policies that will make the sector attractive to investors while reducing the cost of doing business in Nigeria. This act provided the legislation through which the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, was established for the sake of regulating the sector. In 2013, under the Jonathan administration, the Power Holding Company of Nigeria, PHCN, the initial holding company that succeeded NEPA, was unbundled into 18 successor companies. The 18 companies included 11 distribution companies, also known as DISCOs, six generating companies, also known as JENCOs, and one transmission company, which is a state-owned transmission company of Nigeria, TCN. Subsequently, more generating companies emerged, and the number of power plants presently stands at 25, apart from an AES plant, making the total number 26. Four years since the emergence of these successor companies, the country is still plagued by the same problems that informed the privatization of the state-owned NEPA. The power sector is still rendered largely inefficient by the same funding problems encountered during the NEPA days. Low generation of power, increased tariffs, insufficient meters, improper regulation of the discos and the jenkos, lack of competition laws, low capacity building in the industry, and lack of sufficient experts are some of the problems still plaguing the sector today. According to Babatunde Fashala, the current Minister of Power, 
Out of the 26 power plants in Nigeria, three are powered by water, namely the hydropower plants of Jeba, Kainji, and Shiroro. The remaining are powered by gas. Out of the installed capacity of 12,341 megawatts from these plants, expected from the operation of 140 turbines, only 78 turbines are generating power. These 78 turbines at their peak generated 5,074 megawatts in February 2016, which is the highest the country has ever achieved. However, 5,074 megawatts is not enough to power a country with a population of over 170 million people. It is alarming that Nigeria has the highest GDP in Africa, but lags woefully behind the African average in power generation. The average Nigerian uses 136 kilowatt hour per year, which is equivalent to just 3% of the power used by the average South African, 5% to that used by the average Chinese citizen, and equivalent to less than a quarter of the power used by an average Indian. We have an installed capacity that is a fraction of the per capita mean of the other BRICS and Mint countries that Nigeria loves to compare itself to. Nigeria even has a lower electricity capacity than Slovakia, a country with about 3% of Nigeria's population. This is unbearably sad and scandalous, especially in view of the fact that electric power generation in Nigeria dates as far back as 1896, when the British occupied and colonized Nigeria. In 1929, the first electricity company, known as the National Electricity Supply Company, NESCO, was established, with Electricity Corporation of Nigeria, ECN, going on to become the successor to NESCO in 1951. There was another body, known as the Niger Dams Authority, NDA. The NDA, established in 1962, was responsible for the construction and maintenance of dams and other works on the River Niger and elsewhere, generating electricity by means of water power. The electricity produced by NDA was sold to ECN for distribution and sales at utility voltages. A decade later, in 1972, the National Electric Power Authority, NEPA, was formed when the operations of ECN and NDA were merged, even though the actual takeoff of NEPA was delayed until January 1973 when a general manager was appointed. For more than 30 years, NEPA was the sole regulator and operator of power facilities in the country and was responsible for power generation, transmission, and distribution. Welcome back. Just last week, the head of the public affairs of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, Dr. Usman Arabi, said that the Minister of Power, Babatunde Fashala, sale of electricity directly from the generating companies directly to the consumers. There must be a reason for this. To discuss these three individuals with me, who are very well grounded in their profession, um, I have the energy correspondent from this day, Mr. Chine Chineme Okafo. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Then the Executive Director, Research and Advocacy, Association of Electricity Distributors, ANED, in the person of Sunday Oduto. Thank you very much. And with us is Dr. Joy Ogaji, Executive Secretary, Association of Power Generation Companies of Nigeria. Thank you for having me. That is APGC. Six. All right. It, something was um, attributed to you that uh, this was a few days ago. Yeah, that the Jenkos generate up to 7,500 megawatts of electricity, but that discos are only able to take a fraction of this. Are you saying the discos are the reason why Nigerians are not getting the power being generated? 
Well, uh, electricity uh, generation and consumption from generation to consumption is a value chain. And as a value chain, um, it's, uh, it doesn't just stop with the distribution companies. Uh, we, as generation companies, generate, and then we put it on the transmission to be transmitted to the distribution companies. If you uh, make reference to what you have just said, I stated that the distribution companies, following a stress test that was conducted in 2013 before they took over the power assets, had a distribution of 4,600 megawatts. While the transmission company, as we speak today, has a capacity, that is our own assessment, 4,500. Now, if you look, if you do your little addition or mathematics, you will see that the, there's a difference between 7,500, 6, uh, 4,006, and 4,005. Now, I have 7,500, and I'm willing to put on the grid, but the grid, the transporter, who should take this power and take to the consumers. Now, transmission says they've improved their capacity and, that, and, and they can take up to 5,500. Right. Even if they say they can take up to 5,500, I have about 8,000 megawatts sitting with me. In fact, I have installed capacity of 12,500, but because they cannot take all, Let's see, what I'm available to do right now due to gas constraint and other factors is 8,000. She says she can generate as much as 7,500. Am I correct? Correct, yeah. What's stopping you guys from taking the, uh, she, she's already mentioned transmission problem, but what is your answer to that? Well, let me start by saying that um, it's very sad for Nigeria that people that are supposed to administer the power sector, people that are also supposed to regulate the power sector, and those of us who have to, all we are doing is that we are mischievously taking Nigerians for granted. So for me, on behalf of all the discos, I will first want to apologize to Nigerians who are bearing the brunt of all the value chain and of the lies that have been peddled everywhere. What we at this school expect is for all of us to come out, tell the public this is where we are, this is the situation. We have to understand that electricity is a product, like any other product. And a product comes at a cost. So everything we're going to talk about today boils down to the issue of cost. We would like to put on record that um, Dr. Usman Abarabi, who happens to be head of the public affairs for NEC, was uh, also invited. Um, he's not appearing. Does that, is it, does that have anything to do with your organizations, uh, Dr. Joy? Uh, well, I don't hold brief for, for him. Mm. I think um, he should be in, in a better position to answer why he's not here. Do they recognize your organization? No. They don't? Yes. And. What is the reason behind that? Well, their point of argument is we are an association, although recognized by the Constitution of Nigeria, we are not a licensee, and that they deal directly with only licensees. But we represent licensees. Sunday, you have a, uh, do you have another opinion about that? The point I will just make <laughs> is that um, the world is not a global village. Perhaps we are not getting it right because we refuse to follow best practices all over the world. Having an association representing electricity distribution companies or generation companies is not new and it's not limited to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We are not reinventing the wheel. If you go on the internet, check Energy UK. That is the body that represents all the disco UK. Same thing in the US, in Canada, even yeah, in South yeah. Africa. But you see, um, it shows where we are as a nation. And for us as Ahmed, I want to put it on record that we've had dealings with the uh, almighty Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. When they started the sectoral meeting, we were invited as stakeholders. In fact, we attended nine of such. It was at the ninth meeting. The very week when we took out an advert, 
requesting that federal government should pay their debt, the receipt that they have used, NBA debt. That was the meeting where both uh, Dr. Ogaji and myself and our colleagues were asked to leave the meeting. So that's what happened. So, but for okay. all we have so no do you think problem. that is the genesis of uh, what? the lack of recognition of it's your organization? It's only uh, the officials of the Federal Ministry of Power yes. and NEC that can answer that question. They are the ones that people should ask. Why did you allow them added in your meetings? Eight months, you engage with them, we had conversation, and then at, on the night meeting in Shokoto, because they did an advert asking for their legitimate debt that had not been paid. You then so but for me it's not important. Okay. Well, we have children. Let, let, let me find out from yes. Chiname. Um, are you aware of this uh, problem between the associations and NEC? Yeah, um, I am aware of Can it. Can you shed some light on it? I think it, um, it got quiet. Um, it got to this level um, in this new administration. NEC had previously held meetings with um, distribution company CEOs and generation company CEOs. It was called the monthly meeting of regulators and operators, but then not with the association as they are now. And so, um, with the coming of this administration, we now have the minister insisting that the government will not recognize these associations. And so, that's how it's been now. And um, I don't know. In Nec your own, but, but in your own opinion, I mean, don't you see this is symptomatic of um, some of the gridlock we have in the power sector? I like to believe that the power sector is heavily politicized. And if these things are happening, it's part of what the kind of politics that is going on, going that on. in the power sector. Um, everybody is free to associate. Nigeria is in, the, is in the dark, and yet there's so much politics that you can cut through with a knife. Joy, you produce. Yes, yes. He should be able to carry yes. that much. And if he is not, where is the problem? Where is it the transportation? I think there are two bottlenecks on the chain there. Okay. We have the transmission bottleneck. We have distribution bottleneck. Now, there is a disconnect between the, the available capacity that can be generated mm. and the capacity that distribution and transmission can take. If transmission can take from what they claim is 5,500, mm -hmm. already you can see from 7,500, I'm already sh short of about 2,000 megawatts, no one can take. So, and, and transmission say they can take 5,500. When they take that 5,500, distribution on their angle can only take 4,006. After the 40, in fact, they can't even take up to 4,006. You start seeing power rejection. You've been seeing on publications, yeah. TCN accusing Disco, they are rejecting power, they are rejecting power. It's because they are unable to take, it's their network. They can't perform magic. But what you're telling me now, I think, might even scare Nigerians the most. Because we are saying that Nigeria needs about 100,000 megawatts for us to be even considered in the level of an industrialized country. Explain to me. You, you, you're in the disco section. Why are you guys rejecting um, power? Before you go to load rejection, let me quite say first and foremost that yes. what Dr. Ogadi just said, it's not true. Okay. And that's part of the problem that we have. We all need to know what we are doing before we start pushing out information. And we have to be sure of what we are saying. In fact, she was talking and she, she spoke about generation, distribution, and transmission. Every time we are talking, let us keep it simple for Nigerians to understand. That in the value chain, it is generation, transmission, distribution. Okay? The issue of installed capacity, that is the, what you are able to do, not what you are doing, not, not what you have ever done, what you are able to do. That's what is called installed capacity. We understand now, that the installed no, capacity... No, no, our viewers may not understand. Okay. In this country, I want to say it, that it is not true that generation company... I thought we'd be talking about why we have not been able to generate enough or transmitting We're coming there, we're coming there, we're coming so there, but there's an there's issue nothing here. Like, there's nothing like 
it is true that the generation companies claim to have, and I'm using that, it's, it's a lawyer and a lawyer, 12,500 in store, in store capacity. capacity. That is giving all, if all things are normal, mm -hmm. that they will be able to do that. Okay? That currently, currently, between 7,000 and 7,500 and 8,000 megawatts. Right. Possibility. Mm -hmm. But they have never, ever, in this country, generated even up to 6,000. Okay. The highest that we generated was, in February last year, it was 5,074 megawatts. Now, reasons for that are numerous, not just one reason. It wasn't because the discourse, and please don't even think about discourse. We are below the value chain, downstream. Between the Jenkos and the discourse, there is a body. Unless Madame is afraid to talk about that because the government thing. Nigerians are afraid of their government. What we have is generation companies, those are the producers of electricity. When they produce, we need a transporter, like trailer, carrying goods from a factory mm -hmm. to the distributors. And first of all, TCN. the trailer must be able to get to the distributor warehouse first. That is the interface. Then the distributor must be able to spread it around. This is, she's the only one that we now hear in, among all the stakeholders. And please do your own investigation, find this. NEC is your best bet. Find out from NEC if currently the discourse in stock capacity is not more than 4,600. He is saying that uh, you kind of prevaricated a little bit on that. Tell us. <laughs> no. Um, I have spoken from technical facts. And um, before this time, I was working for the Presidential Tax Force on Power. If you've heard of um, Presidential Tax Force on Power, they were more like um, the center of the reform. We were advising the then president of um, um, President um, Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan. And a stress test was conducted. Now, I would have loved it if TCA were here because the transmission company should be here. Any, any time, point of correction, the next time you invite the two value chain, please correct it we by did. having the. We did. And they uh, couldn't and make it. They could make it, okay. including NEC. Okay. Yeah. Because the transmission company of Nigeria should have been here to defend or oppose the motion that says that generation companies have 7,000, over 7,500 megawatts. In his uh, response, he asserted that generation companies are only stating that they can, but they have never generated, you ask me. You know power is, um, cannot be stored. Correct. Like your, I pass my neighbor, as you put it, you must have enough load consuming equipment to be able to take all the power that's coming out. If I have 7,500 megawatts and there is a bottleneck at the transmission line, I cannot even take it. How can I even generate to my optimum? That is not possible. That is, that, that, that is clear logic. I, I, no, yes, but, but I cannot generate all the 8,000 because he, he made that Jenkos do not have and that they have never in the history of Nigeria generated no, but, but, more but than 6,000. what 6, stops 000. you from... No, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we, know, yes. no. we know from facts that I think you have 140 is it, uh, turbines yes. that are active. Yes. I mean, uh, that is in store capacity. Yes. But you have 78 that is actually working. Yes. All right? Yes. If you say you can generate up to 8,000, mm -hmm. what stop? He's saying that it's impossible for you to generate that much. No, so I'm that not saying it's impossible. Please get me right. I'm saying that... That what they, they have not. to do, mm -hmm. that's, no, they have not gone beyond 5,074 megawatts okay. for different reasons. Okay. Number one reason, and she's right, is the transmission grid. Not the different grid, transmission grid. That's number one problem. Number two is the issue of gas constraints. I'm from Abeokuta, I'm an Eba man, from an Eba high chief. Okay. In Abeokuta, we get what we like to take from Ayoboy Paja, Lagos West, that transmission station there, mm -hmm. that station carried life from there into Ogunitech through a place we call Iweko, where there's a cement factory. Between Lagos and Abelguta, we have a transmission station in Abelguta called Jerry Transmission Station with three trans big transformers belonging to TCN. One is out, and it has been out like that for over three years. The one coming from Lagos, there's what they call breaker issue. It's been there for three and a half years. 
and they have not repaired it. In the same vein, from Ibatonto Shagam, same Ogu State, there's what they call under something like under amperage, something is less than what it should be. Mm. If you if you require say 100 mm cable to do something, say you are using armor cable, 100 mm is what you should use, right. and you put 400, uh, you put uh, 40 mm. 40, okay. So what it means is that you cannot transmit more than that 40. That is the problem to from Ibadan to Shagamu in Ogun State, and the transmission station in Nigeria, as well as the one in Shagamu. They were actually commissioned in 1980, technology of the 70s, and they have not been properly maintained. And we have loads of that all over the country in Benin. Same thing in Akwa Ibom. So it, it's not about us just talking to them. It's not their fault. They've been underfunded over the years. It's not about this administration or the last administration. It's been like that over the years. What we are saying is that why can't we all look at how we can solve this problem? Instead of naming, blaming, and claiming, we don't need to grandstand about what we know it is not true. We have done only 5,074. We discourse, we join hands with Jenkos, all of us celebrated it. But we are celebrating failure. Because a country with 180 million uh, population, yeah. the rule of thumb is that you generate 1,000 megawatts per 1 million populace. South Africa with 45 million, they have 40,000 megawatts. Why can't we all talk about how do we increase that generation? How do we improve the transmission grid? And even the distribution network. Chine, may you, you wanted to. Yeah, I think um, I, I think I'm better situated to sort of provide a, a, an independent um, perspective yes. on, on, on this, and that is to say that um, everybody in this sector should be accountable and own up to their responsibilities. I I imagine that when we generated five five thousand and seventy four megawatts. In February 2016, mm -hmm. we celebrated it, but it was momentary because the transmission company and the distribution company could not sustain that power that was generated. Um, I'm not on the side of the Jenkos, but empirical evidence, facts shows that the discos have enough. I mean, the Jenkos have enough capacity to deploy. The discos can do more than 5,000 megawatts. Based on his talk capacity. Based on that. Yes. And if they have gas, they've done 5,000 megawatts, they can do more than 5,000 megawatts if the transmission company and the distribution company agree to own up to their responsibilities. Both of them are playing hide and seek. I'm sorry to say that. The disco blamed the transmission company. The transmission company blamed the disco. And so you begin to wonder who is telling the truth. You know, everyone was hoping that with the success of the telecom industry, power was going to be the next big mm. thing to salvage Nigeria's uh, doldrum. But are you aware that it took a Chinese company to come in and do creative funding for the industry? I'm talking of Huawei. They did creative funding for the industry, for the telecom industry to get the kind of respect that it has now. Yeah. Um, because if you look at some of the European companies like, um, well, let me not mention names. <laughs> they were unable to fund the telcos when the licenses were issued. Is it a question of serious underfunding? You have raised the issue of terrible um, and, and depreciated uh, transmission lines and all those other things. Is it underfunding? Where is the core problem? Nigerians are just embarrassed to go anywhere else in the world and talk about its electricity. This is, in fact, during uh, the little break we had, we had a break because it, you know, electricity. I mean. Our electricity went off here in the studio, all right, before we put on the gen. So where is the problem? The problem is gross underfunding, both pre-privatization and post-privatization. The question now should be asked, why does that problem continue post-privatization? But before I answer that, let us isolate TCN. Transition Company of Nigeria has not been properly funded by the federal government from time immemorial. And since 2013, they even brought 
in a management company, Manitoba. Mm -hmm. They left in frustration. The contract was not renewed, and there were a lot of issues. People can say whatever they like. There are some things we cannot say on there. But those who are watching us, if they have conscience, they know what they've done with the money. <laughs> so if we continue to lie, just because we want people to, to like, uh, if I want people to like this school, I should not come and lie. Or she wants them to love Jenko. She should not come and tell us good lies to say, we have this ready. It's not ready. How long should go power plant? It's in my village. In Ogute, Papa Lanto. No gas. So they are not able to produce to their capacity because of gas constraint. And gas constraint, go to a motor shop, is everywhere. Egg green, which is about the biggest in West Africa. They are ready, but they are constrained. To so the gas. constraint is not just because. Uh, transition and disco cannot know the constraint is mainly because when we and I need to correct one when they generated 5074 it was not because discos and I'll speak for disco not that we could not sustain it that generation even did not last for 24 hours shamefully so for a country like this after that what big we should celebration be saying is that we, we need to <laughs> we need to invest what caused it because uh, we need auditors to see, seem to be uh, uh, mobilizing we're, 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 the, we're, hold on the the discussion. Discussion. I, I, we're, I would that's why so let me that. let him yes. he, he had a reason to but now here's yes. your okay. yes because he, i i can hear him citing a number of my generation plants in the west i i stated for the records again generation capacity installed currently we have 12,500 megawatts. Agree. Now, those companies is mentioning, Eggbin, has a capacity of 1,320. That's true. Oloro Shogu has its own capacity of about 500. Now, yes. out of it, most of them, due to gas, you know, in the west, taking uh, gas That's from fine. the east down to the west, there is a lot of um, constraint down that way, which is why our available, what is available is for a 7,500 and above. Right now, that's beyond yes. installed capacity. Beyond installed capacity, available whether gas capacity. constrained or what, I'm available. And I'm saying what can, is available can cannot I, be transmitted. Yes, can but I finish? Your grid. Yes, the grid is weak. The grid is talking weak. about the grid. They're talking about the yes. different. No. Maybe people don't know the difference between different network. I'm afraid. And no, okay. but distribution network okay. has a blame. You cannot co uh, completely exonerate yourself because yeah. even when give it to me and see whether I will not distribute it. <laughs> even <laughs> when okay, but, but <laughs> even <laughs> when I'm so afraid if it doesn't go from you, the more, the more money I make now. To you, <laughs> yes. I'm not how, exonerating. How can you how how can you distribute it? I'm saying that go back and find out. Unless and until we do that, we cannot. None of us three or three of us here have those facts that have. are not. I can't very bad. These, these, are, these are these are open data. These are open data. These are open data. These are available. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Before Wednesday break, we're talking about gross underfunded. Yes. And you raise the, the fact the that uh, at least the transmission company, more than any other group needs right now, funded. needs to be completely resuscitated. Mm -hmm. yes. Tell me, how do you go about that? You said there was a company that um, was, a, a company came in here and they left in frustration. Manitoba. No, I was talking about Manitoba. 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 Okay. Because you see, some people say transmission companies of Nigeria should be privatized. Other people say, it should be concession. Our own view is this. It is owned by the federal government. If you own a used car, the battery is bad, alternator is gone wrong, the body is bad, you can now decide what you want to do with it. Correct. If you want to sell it, you sell it off and take your eyes off it and manage how they do it. Provide um, framework. Mm. If you want to lease it out, somebody to use a taxi or something, lease it out, let them repair it, provide what they need to do as a condition for leasing it. The transmission grid is very weak, and it is due, due to gross underfunding. Another thing that they call the Nigerian factor, I, I don't need to be saying that. Because mm -hmm. underneath everything we do, <laughs> when we say underfunded, is underfunded, underfunded. So Even the Oyimbo Manitoba people that came, mm -hmm. we saw the kind of cars that they were using as official cars. Land cruiser today is over 50 million naira. We know what I can buy. So we are funny in this country. 
Well, we like to maintain status regardless of our situation. And discos are not immune from that. Jenkos are not immune from that. All of us. And not just the power sector. Go to other corporations, other area in this country. So to solve a problem, let's, we, we look at the problem and then what's the solution? So the funding issue is very important. Then the discos are too, are not well funded in terms of the investment that the disco owners are supposed to put on it as of today. And that too, there are reasons for it. Recently, I think I started a program by saying that uh, the minister has just approved that Jenkos can sell directly to the public. Mm. I guess without a discourse. Is that, is that correct? Uh, a, a class of um, the customers, not all the classes. Not all just the classes. Just about 30% of the classes. But why would you need to go around the discourse at all? Well, instead of trying to perfect that model. Okay. Um, that's why I brought the Bible. <laughs> Let's try. This is the Bible of the sector, mm -hmm. electricity power sector um, regulatory. Um, uh, sorry, sector reform act, two thousand and five. Um, this um, uh, this act makes uh, make provision for the declaration of eligible customers. If you read from section twenty four down to so, uh, section twenty eight, it made provision for eligible customers, and um, by the act. This declaration of eligible customers ought to have been uh, ought to have been declared. Who are some of those type of eligible uh, customers? Uh, the one uh, 132 um, um, customers. These are net on on the on the networks. These customers actually under normal circumstances do not pass through distribution networks. 132. They they take power no, directly. Just give me example of some of them. We're, we're um, talking to the public. Okay, they okay. need to know all this fact. Um, some of these uh, are these um, uh, companies like uh, Ashaka Cement, companies like um, uh, um, Steel Mills. Those companies that take power Mainly and they're factories. very big factories. Yes, okay. not not uh, residential consumers. And essential services like yes, okay. yes, uh -huh. yes. But anyway, carry yes. on. Yes. So so um, the act made for provision that prior to privatization, eligible customers class should be declared. Mm -hmm. But this was not declared. The, the, the government of the day did not declare the eligible customers before the privatization. So the government now realizing is uh, either is a mistake or uh, in action and coming back to declare it now, though late, but we still welcome it. Now, what are the benefits of eligible customers? Eligibility will introduce competition on the demand side. Okay. The, the discos have about, let's say, 100% of customers. Now, by this declaration, about 30% of that customers will be taken out from them. With that, the discos can now focus more on the 70% of their customers, which is ma ma mainly the residential. So you're saying they're incapable right now of servicing the 100% of the gap? Well... They will speak with their mouth, but um, oh, that uh, well, <laughs> uh, well, the, yes, yes. As lawyers, lawyers say, rest if so, look it up. Nigerians, are you well served? <laughs> Why not come directly way. to me and get your power? I, I see so, you coming. Yes, it will bring greater pressure for efficiency on the supply side. The presence of retailers or the mere possibility of future competition will force existing distribution to establish appropriate customer services. A lot of us are complaining, uh, this, uh, discos are not serving us well. Now they have, they can focus on you. The reason why they were not able to focus so much on the residential, the main, the bulk of their customers, is, uh, the 70% is because these 30% are high paying customers. So they can just even stay in their offices and money will just be hitting their account. Then you and I, the 70%, they must come to you, meet at you, and ensure that you pay. So this will bring about competition. And also eligible customers also, these calls are also eligible customers. So they can, you know, like he said, some of them are not, uh, according to their location, are not able to get enough power. They can come directly to a Genko and take power, like Kano. Ask me, just call me, and I will tell a Genko to be sending you more power to serve your customers if you are on the uh, eligible customer's uh, class. So it will reduce financial risk by supplying credit-worthy eligible customers. You know this issue of owing, owing. currently the, the, the Jenkos are being owed nearly 600 billion, my brother. 
Can any business survive? And who is responsible? I don't want to call the discos. Discos have said that consumers are not paying, so I don't have any contract with them. By contractual basis in the market, I have contract with an agency, a government agency called Bulk Trader. You may have heard of them, NBEX. So I have a contract with Bulk Trader that see, I give you all my power. Bulk Trader signed agreement with me that when you give me your power, I will, I will pay 100% of the power. Now I've given NBET 100%, and all NBET has been paying is 20%. The maximum, the last one they paid was 29%. Is that because the discos are not paying them? NBET said discos are not paying. And I said, I don't want to know because by, as, as lawyers, by the principle of privity of contract, I'm not a party to that contract between you and disco. So if you I know, I gave you power, give me my money. And okay. Jenkos I, have I been see, owed. I see. Yes. So by a serious yes. So issue. by government declaring this, uh, the Jenkos that are if I Jenkos are on life support. They are on life support. Any moment from now, if they touch the button, Jenkos are dead. And if Jenkos die, discos can't have anything to say. Please, oh, you transmission guys, you guys doesn't don't have don't anything die, to yeah. transmit. Don't, don't die. So <laughs> hold on, hold on, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me just land. Yeah. Because we are about dying, the minister. Avon done his research, dis discovered that if he takes out thirty percent of the of this customer hold and give to the Jenkos where they can get some money, at least thirty percent of their money is coming to them. Plus, what NBET is bringing, whether twenty or twenty nine percent, at least there is a lifeline for them. But you know, so eligible customers is a lifeline for generation companies. Joy, let, let, let me share something with you. The fear, the fear in the people, or in, in fact, in the industry particularly yes. among the discos, mm. is that when you start tinkling with the setup, yeah. where you say the discos are supposed to get um, directly from you mm. through the transmission coming of Nigeria, et cetera, mm. and you introduce another leg of it, where the um, class of customers can come directly to you, doesn't that really mess with the funding on the disco side. Doesn't that create a major problem? Can I answer? Or Please, yes. I'm a, and and uh, Chine, I uh, want you to, to contribute to that, but, but go ahead. Thank you very much. Again, I'm happy that my colleague is a lawyer. And a lawyer like me, I expect her to be versed in the law and to remember how this project came about. That when she used to work for a now, <coughs> when we bought these entities, the Jenkos and the Discos, there was a contract. And there was an agreement with the federal government. In that agreement, put it in tabular form, they say, we commit to do A, B, C, D. You, Discos, you must do E, F, G, H. Doing EFGH is conditional upon us on our part doing ABCD, like I mentioned in a few ago. First thing, they said, we will make sure that the, pro the product is appropriately priced. In their own, the way they couch it in the contract, they call it cost reflective tariff. Okay. Tariff that is such that will reflect the cost of production. They are the producer. And that's why I say we should not be short sighted. What they do in other clients was that when India started their own reform in New Delhi, HEC and C losses was as high as 59%. But they were able to bring it down to 8%. But that was after three years. In that three years, the government made sure that they priced the product appropriately in order not to create what we call tariff shock. If the, if the tariff, if the amount is too high, because of low income earners and everything, they subsidize it. They, they fill the shortfall, so that at the end of the day, um, the industry will survive, the people will not have too much to pay, and then gradually they decide to join the subsidy as the industry was becoming whole. In the case of Nigeria, today, for an average of residential customers, we're buying at an average of 68 naira per kilo hour. And we're selling at an average, and I'm calling it national average, but they vary from point to point. The average is 31.50 cobalt. If you are buying a product for 68 naira, 
and you're only being allowed to sell for 31 naira 50 kobo. Tell me. So those what are regulatory issues. Yeah. Yes, because the regulator fixed the tariff. Yeah. When the tariff was, and this is what I expect my sister to understand or say in public. When they fixed it, they fixed it in December 2015. It became effective on the 4th of February 2016. It was predicated upon the forex, uh, the foreign exchange rate of, rate of right. 197 naira to one dollar. Right. Based on that, they fixed those price at 150 kobo. Based on that, for example. But at a point, the cost of generation companies, their cost of production went up. Why? Gas supply. Those who are supplying gas, they sell based on dollar calculation. They receive naira. But it dominated, it dominated in dollar, IOC, the international oil company. So, which means it, her own um, invoice has gone up, so she has to pass that down to MBET, which is down to us. So, which means if the invoice now says 68 naira per kilo hour, but the tariff has not changed, so I'm still selling at 31 naira 50 kilo, but I cannot pass that increase to the end user. Let us ask ourselves simple arithmetic. Can I pay, so she now supplied me light. She sent me those invoices. Can I pay 100%? No, I cannot pay. Because I cannot, what I, I the, way, the, the amount I'm selling is even on, being undersold. Even the one I sell, I cannot collect all. We all know. There are leakages and a lot of things in the system. A lot of it down to our own fault. In some, many cases, many of our staff who knife with customers and so on. So this of collection losses is there. We're, we're, we're coming so to all it. of those issues, yes. right? right gave rise to mounting debt and huge shortfall. Right. The shortfall today, as at the end of the, the December, the shortfall in the, in, the, in the industry was 809 billion naira. So we are not able to remit to them, and it's not fair on them. That is the truth. But the issue of eligible customers is very funny. Because like I said, as a lawyer, I expect my learning sister to understand better. Uh, Chineme, you were trying to say something about that. I like to say it's, it's, it's both a welcome and not a welcome development. Um, just like Mr. Oduto said, um, when the privatization was going to happen, there were agreements that were reached. Even in the EPSR Act, there are sections of the EPSR Act that give conditions precedent for eligible customers to be exactly. declared. Accepted, it's the right of the minister to do that, but certain things needed to be done. I don't see a competitive market. Exactly. The market is not competitive, <laughs> and you're asking one end of the market to take what it has <laughs> and give to one end. How are you going to sustain the other end of the market? Cherry picking. It's just it's cherry picking. The could, market is not healthy be, could it competitively. Be as a matter of urgency, for so it will destroy the sector. These things, these decisions, these decisions are what got us. These decisions are what got us to where we are. There was a time the regulator froze certain classes of of, ta of, 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 of tariff, yes. and then we Hold began on, to change. have more shortfalls. As the shortfalls, financial shortfalls increased, we also had voluntary risk, uh, uh, um, um, issues. There when we didn't have enough power. The regulator didn't recalibrate the tariff to flow with these changes. You couldn't have said you are running, you are operating a cost reflective tariff and you're refusing to accept the fact that inflation rate has risen, foreign exchange rate has also risen, the capacity that, that, the con that, that the discos need to have that amount what of revenue. What you're simply saying is that this is seriously political. In Part of the reason why probably the government is not allowing you to change your tariff, when you look at what happened to the dollar and everything now being denominated with the dollar, it would be politically suicidal for you to raise, because I think the National Assembly to stepped in the cost? To, to, to recover. To to but that's why, we said, that's why I said, that's why I said earlier that, that the past yes. sector is like heavily politicized. Yes. You need to have an economic 
power sector, sector. a power sector that right. is commercially driven. Okay, I come back to the eligible customer uh, regime. Right. When you now ask the discos to supply heavy industries power, through which network are they going to do mm -hmm. that? The transmission network, that is weak. So those will also have to prioritize. Of, of course. So it's like jumping the boat. You need to set certain things right before you do this. Um, but I know that because you're the front line, you are the, the face that customers see. They don't know about the transmission company. The Jenkos are in the background, so Joy, you can hide a little bit. <laughs> the <laughs> the discos, always, you see, you have a lot to do. You have a lot to do within your group, but I, I, I think even beyond that, beyond that, the need to now begin to educate Nigerians as to what Chineme said, what their rights are, the availability of, um, of, uh, I mean, of meters, et cetera, is your job. But let us hear your parting shot. We need to pay for what we use. We need to have a culture of payment. Last week I was in Kano, Castina, and Jigawa states. And in Kano, I was taken to a neighborhood where they were being given an estimated bill until three months ago, when Kano Disco was able to meet her. Because in, in spite of all the challenges that we are having, we are still metering, but the rate has gone down because of the expense of it. The shortfall has made it practically impossible, very difficult to meet our customer. So they meet our those neighborhood and they were objecting to metering. How many Nigerians hear about that? A location in Jeba, under Ibano Disco, I was there. That was uh, late last year. They were... Sorry, when, when they object they to didn't want like that. No, I got you. When they got the prepared meter, the one in Kano, yes. a rich man that is very popular, I won't name names, he realized that the cost was higher than when he was getting estimated being. As an average Nigerian, they say estimated being higher, higher, always higher. In some cases, yes. But in many cases, no. not necessarily. It is what you use, energy conservation. So I went, because for cultural or religious reasons, with that axis, I could not even enter everywhere, but the few places they took me into, the old, the rich man allowed me access to few places. Even the guest toilet, the light was on. <laughs> you see, you don't put on the light somewhere when you are not using it, when really you're not there. there. The other thing is that we also need the federal government to take the bull by the horn. We should do something on how to deal with energy theft. She's not getting enough from me. I'm not paying enough. I'm not everything enough. There's no doubt about that. If, if, if she may have only one reason, but I can have five to six, ten reasons. One of those reasons is energy theft. And when we cash them, we do not have prosecuting powers. Give them the police in 2014, February. I was chief legal advisor and company secretary of Bado Disco. And we caught two gentlemen who stole transformer oil, 25 liter keg, 20 of those 25 liter kegs. That's a big one. Imagine where they got it from. And we took them to the state police headquarters, the Liberia in Abeokuta. And we still caught them somewhere in Rebo. Before I went there the third day, they've been released. They took money from them. I traced one of them. He confessed to me that he paid 25,000 naira to the police. We cannot continue to run a system like this and we expect better results. So we need to have mobile court specifically to try electricity related offenses. I caught a little parfait, stealing energy. You go to hotels, they bypass so much. All these problems and leakages cannot be handled by this course alone, not even by the power sector alone. We need the law enforcement agencies. So all these things are, have to do with the society that we live in. So I feel that the best way to solve the problem for all of us to put Nigeria first. Put Nigeria first. Joy, thank you so much. I think uh, you, you've been able to educate uh, Nigerians as to what Jenkos do. And um, I think you've held very well for the Jenkos. Uh, Sunday.
Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. You were very feisty about defending the discos. And um, I think even for me, I've learned a lot about what was, I mean, what has been going on between the two of you. Because most times we only hear about the discos. And uh, Chineme, well, thank you for shedding some more light on some of the issues about uh, some of our power problems. We'd like to thank you for being part of this very, very interesting um, summit on power, power solution, and how to get Nigeria under the right track like any industrialized nation.